This is the sequel to Spring and Summer Quilt Designs. This is part two of two. And this is where we left off on part one, where we took some flowers, dragonfly, butterfly, and just showed some different ways that we could put this into an all-over quilt design. The um, possibilities are endless, um, but using these designs. Part one will show you exactly how to draw these designs. Let's look at ways that we can use these in a quilt um, with some custom style of quilting. One way we can use these designs, and again, the possibilities are endless, so I'll just use an example, but we can use them in our setting triangles, we can use them in larger flying geese, open areas on our quilt, and I'm not necessarily talking about um, the background designs yet. But uh, we can, here's an example of a triangle area. And I can come in here beforehand, I would take a marking tool and I would draw an arc that's pretty uniform through my triangle. Once I get the size or the, the arc that I like, I would, if I had a lot of these, I would develop a template using foam or template plastic, cardboard, whatever you want, so that um, if you had a lot of these, you can make it consistent. If you want, maybe you don't, and that's fine too. Then I can come in, and I'm going to combine the um, butterflies and a flower. So I'll come in from one side, and I'm going to go towards the middle, and then I, as I'm coming in, I can go ahead and do one of these butterflies, but I also showed you how to do it with just simple hearts. Then we can continue on just a tiny bit before the middle. I can go ahead and do a center stamen for a flower. Then I'm going to watch where I'm going and not where I'm at so that I can begin and end my flower petals right by this um, the stem line that I brought in. And it will make it easier to get out of this. So I don't have to be huge. You can take up the whole space or just fill it real nicely. It doesn't matter. So here I'm just going to do one and end right there. And then I'm going to start again. And that's going to allow me, I'm going to do two more. When I'm done, to go right around the center stamen area and continue back on out. Now as I go, I'm going to get to the point where I can do another butterfly. Now I'm going to do it backwards. I can have my butterflies flying out of this and that's okay if you want to do that. I'm going to have mine facing the flower both ways. So I'm just doing it backwards. And as we know, when we free motion quilt, we need to be do, able to do our designs every direction. So I'd practice it, doodle it ahead of time, practice it. Um, and you can do this with any other designs. Now, if you wanted to, you could come back in and just do some simple stippling or some pebbles and things around that if you wanted to. If I was going to do this around the edge of the quilt, I would, unless my quilt was very heavily quilted, I would leave this alone. If the quilt was very heavily quilted, then yes, I would come back uh, into this area. Let's look at some negative space. Oh, before I say that. So we could also take, um, say, flying geese, and we could use any portion of these or just one item uh, in this setting triangle. I'll look at one more. If you're not comfortable doing the butterflies or dragonflies, just make it simple on yourself. I've gone ahead and drawn my arc. And you can come in and do simple designs on these setting triangles. We'll do a little curve, or a hook rather. Then you can just simply come out and do some leaves on your way up. You don't have to make the marks exactly. Come on up to the top, do your circle, and then you can start doing your flower. I made that leaf a little too close. I'm just going to run through this real quick. 
This is one I've gone over before, but not in that last one, last video. Then I can go around that stamen and come on out. Remember, just fill up your area if you want. There's that little splay that I like so much, and I never go right on the stitches when I come back. I can come back here, and I just like to face um, in but you can send those leaves another direction if you'd like, whatever you want, and just fill it up with some curls, leaves, flowers, and you have the same type of thing with a setting triangle. The same type of concept applies to working in negative space. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do before I work in negative space, most probably, if they apply, is to do all my stitching in the ditch. That's really gonna get your fabric to lay down straight. Or flat. Then I'm going to come in and put in some major designs that I want to include. So I can go ahead and have my little dragonfly perhaps. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch that into my negative space where I want it to go. Now I personally, when I put designs in here, prefer to outline that design right away because in some cases you put things against it and you lose your design. So I'll come back in and just simply outline very closely. I don't do even a quarter inch. I do a very close outline to whatever I'm doing. So here's our little designs that we're going to put in. There we go. Sorry about that poor dragonfly. Then we'll throw in a um, butterfly. And I'm not going to send it. And if I want them all going in, that's fine. Have them all going in. But usually I go different directions. Unless they're all coming in towards a whole bunch of flowers. So... Vary up is the essence of what I'm saying. Vary up what you're doing so it doesn't look like um, too structured. Okay, I'm going to just, for example, I probably wouldn't put another butterfly right in the same direction. All right, let's put a butterfly right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm not going to put antennas or anything, but I am going to outline it. And then, yes, let's go ahead and put maybe a flower or two right in the middle. So we'll put a couple of flowers in there. And um, I didn't show this one before, but I just absolutely love this flower. And then we'll throw in what I call more of a pansy flower. And we'll throw that over here. Same concept. We'll spread it out a little bit. And let's just say that's enough for now. And this is our negative space. Um, and, of course, yes, you would, um, I will echo those so that they don't get lost within my negative space. So then I can come up with the designs that I want to surround them with. And we might use uh, pebbles. We might use some circles. Personally, I love this feather that I've shown before. And we're just going to very tightly surround all of our negative space, the items that we drew with um, heavy quilting. So that's how we would use it uh, in negative space. All right, I um, ended real quickly 
not really showing much of this. So I've gone ahead and shown a little bit more of what would be some background stitching. Um, I was mainly showing you the different designs and different designs you could use, but I usually try to take design and use it quite a bit before I change into another one. So if I'm going to use pebbles, you can see I've shown here how I would actually go for a ways with pebbles or with the, um, the little feathers. I wouldn't change constantly. And then this is a little bit better idea of what that might look like on a quilt once you're really filling in that area. Uh, practice real good before you do the small stitching. Make sure you're comfortable with that on a quilt. If you are interested in how I might put all of this together in a whole clock, um, you can leave a message and um, I can plan that out for another time. Uh, so if you want the whole cloth uh, drawing, let me know. If you like the video, please subscribe. You're welcome to make a comment. You're welcome to share the post. So have a wonderful day and enjoy your spring and summer quilt designs. <laughs>